So that opens the door for the fourth app, which is environmental apps after we're done with energy apps. It's the same type of porous material that I ended the energy apps with. It can be used for, uh, again, a large spectrum of these environmental applications besides oil spill. It can be used for carbon capture, okay? So CO2 and other toxic chemicals, actually CO2 is by itself is not toxic, but a lot of the industrial exhaust contain really nasty, nasty vapors. So if you have in the chimney of the power plant or whatever plant that you have that produces these toxic, toxic materials, <coughs> if you have uh, uh, you know, powder of our solid adsorbent, this black soot that you see, this black exhaust, that you see goes to the pores and remains in the pores and what goes into our atmosphere and the environment is just steam, okay? Because again, our materials are particularly hateful of water. So water is not welcome to the pores, only the nasty stuff remains in the pores and only clean stuff goes into our atmosphere, not even CO2 would escape it. <clears throat> so lots of lots of other application. One particular thing that I told you the oil companies or the gas com natural gas company would keep talking that, okay, 50% less than gasoline uh, CO2 uh, emission into the atmosphere. What they don't tell you is the ten tens of millions of gallons of water that we must pollute into these fracking wells, okay? And the other problem with the fracking wells is that actually the nasty fluids that they use in the fracking fluids can diffuse to the regular water reservoir that we actually drink from. Studies have found that up to a mile or two miles of the fracking wells, some contaminants of the fracking fluid was, was found. So what we try to do here, we're not trying to be extra political or anything. If we must use fracking, we might as well green it. Okay? What that means is that we can take this nasty fluid that comes off out of the fracking well. This water is called produced water. <clears throat> so I have a very good subgroup here uh, sp uh, specialized in, what, in, in porous material research. So they take this fracking water and there are several remediation steps to purify it to at least let it be useful for recycling. So we don't have to constantly intrude upon the major water reservoirs or the water supplies that we have. <clears throat> Actually, Wichita Falls, a couple of years ago, they had to, to um, <clears throat> pump their citizens with uh, uh, sewage water, purified sewage water, because of this much consumption of water resources towards fracking. So this is a very, very serious problem that's not too far from us, especially here in North Texas. So we're among the richest areas in natural gas, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, etc. So in each, okay, forget about fracking water. Let's just focus on drinking water, okay? In each refrigerator that you guys have in your homes, there are two prime, there are carbon filters, okay? And if you're f buying a fancy five-stage five stage osmosis system, one of the column, two of the columns would be primary carbon and secondary carbon. The same thing, they do that also with the fracking water remediation. So they start with raw water, then they ozonate it, uh, they, they filter the solid materials, then use these uh, 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 carbon filters and ultimately use UV. So let's look at the carbon filters here, just that element, whether it's fracking water or drinking water. <clears throat> so. This is the UV vis spectrum of the raw material, not this nasty. We dilute it by huge amounts and we get rid of at least the particulates. Okay? So we, we actually, it's still looking white, so, which is deceiving because benzene, for example, is colorless liquid and it's carcinogenic, it causes a lot of problems. <clears throat> so anyways, so the organic materials that are in the fracking water absorb at about 225 nanometer. This is in the visible region, your eye can't see it again. If you add a zeolite filter, the zeolite are one of the, zeolite are uh, uh, one of the type of porous material that are at, of utmost use in the industry for catalysis, for petrochemical industry, etc. It's one of the typical, uh, most common porous materials. So if you run a filter, if you run the fracking water through a filter of zeolite, 
the signal reduces just by a small fraction, less than 10%, like from 0.65 to 0.45 here. Okay? If you use BPL carbon, this is one of the commercial forms of carbon filters. Okay? It does a little bit better, but not by a lot. Look what happened when we use our FMAF or FMIF material, fluorous metal organic or metal inorganic frameworks. The signal completely disappeared, basically. Okay, um, I, I wouldn't recommend drinking it even at that, after that stage, but that's an extremely efficient purification of, of this nasty chemical. This little shoulder that you see here is where the benzene and the other carcinogenic and particularly aromatic, so-called aromatic hydrocarbons that are particularly toxic, also they are completely removed here. I mean, you cannot completely remove it, but you can compare. If we show this slide to our uh, water purification companies, we expect them to smile and to consider, you, you know, to consider uh, changing their filter materials with our materials. Only problem is just like I explained to you, we start verifying the concept with expensive metals, this type of material is silver-based. Silver is not very cheap. Yet, not, neither the organic ligands, actually. My students and postdocs spend a lot of time making these fluorinated organic ligands. They cost actually similar price to the silver starting material. But that is the, where we start with. Right now, we already started, have, have had success making copper-based porous materials likewise. <laughs> so that should get rid of the organic chemicals, uh, organic pollutants in the fracking water. The problem is that beyond that, there is still other dangerous chemicals. There are toxic metals, heavy metals. So things like lead made some national headlines during the election, right? In Flint, Michigan, actually in Georgetown, Texas, the lead level was even greater than Flint, Michigan. It just didn't get as much press. <clears throat> what we discovered here is that my students, we can purify from lead, thallium, gadolinium, mercury, Silver, all of these nasty solid, na nasty uh, heavy metal ions, you can turn their emission completely different. So this is the starting material. It's based on gold. Okay, if you add just what we call in chemistry part per billion level of silver, one part silver, a billion parts water in the solution. <clears throat> okay, so. The color changes dramatically from red to, to green. If you do the same experiment with lead, it changes from red to turquoise. With thallium, it changes to blue. If you mix thallium and silver together, you can get white color as well in, in combination with the sensor material. So it can sense extremely small detection levels at the part per million and part per billion levels with these different metals. Last but not least, I think everybody in this room uh, has had a family member or friend that they lost or are suffering from cancer. Okay? So we do research. So our meaning of sustainability also includes cancer detection and cancer uh, treatment. So I guess science is very interesting. So in our journey, while we were looking for solution processed OLEDs, we wanted to make this type of material that is uh, soluble in an organic polymer called chitosan that is derived from shrimp. So it is water soluble. Okay? So if you can have a water soluble organic polymer and cover that emits, let's say, blue, and cover it on an organic la layer, a pure solid or a, 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 a thin film made from Another material that is pri that's not water soluble, but soluble in an organic solvent, then the water will not dissolve that material. Then you can have a multi-layer device that can have high efficiency and can emit across the visible region. This is our, our initial goal. Actually, it's the same picture of that white tube that I showed you earlier, turquoise plus orange, right? So <clears throat> when we did that, however, we discovered that the material can also be useful for biological applications. So as you can see here, since it is in a, in a biocompatible benign polymer, chitosan, it's edible polymer, as you can see here when we did the biological testing, there is no toxicity whatsoever. So 100% cell viability means there is, this is a, in a real cell, in a real human cell. 
100% viability, there is no, absolutely no toxicity. So what means that the same type of material that we designed for OLEDs now can be used to actually detect uh, cancer in elements, do biological imaging, even in live anim animals. These animals are actually from, our, from the lab of our associate dean, Dr. Pam Padilla. She and I co-supervise a graduate student who is now a faculty a lecturer in our chemistry department, Dr. Sophie uh, Kinanjui. So these animals can stand hypoxia, which is oxygen deficiency, for extre extremely long periods of time. We did similar experiments in uh, the lab of another faculty member in biology, Dr. Jag Pudur, <coughs> where uh, fish embryo could also be detected, and we can introduce these types of metal-containing organic materials into the body of, of these different animals. <clears throat> so one particular issue, so you would say, why would we bother with worms if we're talking about cancer? So cancer is typically associated with extremely low oxygen level. If you wait until the oxygen level reaches like less than 1%, <clears throat> it approaches the, the condition called anoxia, the tumors typically become solid, and that would be too late. Our light-emitting phosphorescent material like those, they can actually be sensitive to extremely small departures, like the normal oxygen level in the atmosphere or the human body, or the animal body, is about 20%. Minute departures from 20% to 18, 17, 16 will turn on the signal stronger and stronger. So the entire worm body would, be, would become almost like a light bulb. So that was our recipe, at least on paper, to, for the early detection of cancer. But I, you know, whenever you talk about cancer, you have to be extremely sensitive to people, human aspects, personal aspects here. So that's why I <coughs> insisted on using the word potential. So there's a lot of, it's a, you know, research is a long journey to take it from the chemistry or biology lab to reach actually, especially with clinical trials and uh, uh, med medical applications. It's a very, very long journey that could take uh, years, tens of years, indeed.